the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to our service for the Epiphany. We can see that the wise men have made their way on their long journey. They've reached the table and uh, are, are looking like they're enjoying being in the limelight. Hopefully you can see them well on the camera for those of you who are watching. For those of you who are listening, we have a tall figure who is wearing purple. Uh, we have a middle-sized figure carrying the most bejeweled, bejeweled casket who's wearing red and a splendid turban. And then there's a much shorter figure who's wearing a beautiful goldy cream and who is definitely carrying something perfumed. And uh, he has a crown. Anyway, with the wise men, you are most welcome this epiphany. I'd like to begin by simply reading the epiphany story. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born, in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, calling together the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. And they saw that the star had stopped, and they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country, by another road. So today is the epiphany. Epiphany literally means appearing or revealing, making obvious, uncovering, manifestation. An epiphany commemorates the first manifestation, the first showing of Jesus as Messiah, not just to his own peoples, as symbolised in the shepherds, but actually to everybody, to you and to I as well, Gentiles, symbolised by the visit of the wise men. And uh, just before this new lockdown started, I had a chance to take my mother's knitted Caspar, uh, Melchior and Balthazar around the parish and was able to visit quite a few of you and to put that lovely chalk blessing on your uh, door frames, the 20 plus C plus, uh, which way around does it go, C plus M plus B, plus 21, which is Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, and the year. It's a wonderful tradition. It's a beautiful way of saying there's a blessing for this house this year. And gosh, who would not want a blessing on their house right at this moment? Epiphany, though, is not just a one-off event. It is a season. We have four Sundays in Epiphany, so it's not just about the storytelling of wise men. Epiphany is actually about casting a vision. Epiphany is actually a down-to-business season. The business of Jesus, the light of the world. That's why in Epiphany season we hear about the firsts. The first miracle, the first sermon, the first disciples, the first exorcism, the first voice from heaven. Yeah, Epiphany is a down-to-business season. In Advent, we celebrate the promise of the light. In Christmas, we rejoice at the coming of the light. And in Epiphany, 
we roll up our sleeves and we set off and we search out for the light that is already shining amongst us. Yeah, Epiphany is a down to business season. And so we gather ourselves now in preparation for worship. The wise men travel difficult roads to meet with the light of the world. Yet we who know him have not always taken the time to meet with him in our own hearts. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The wise men were overjoyed to bring the fullness of their gifts to lay before the light of the world. Yet we who owe him so much have not always taken the time to be thankful. Christ, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The wise men obeyed the prompting of, the, of God's spirit and returned another way. Yet we, to whom he has spoken so many times, have not always taken the time to listen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and raise you to new life in the power of his Spirit. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours, always and everywhere. Mighty creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voice to proclaim the glory of your name 
and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, and rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share the one bread and the one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one bread. Draw near with faith. Christ is the host and we are his guests. The body and blood of Christ shed for us all. Amen. We're going to use that rather beautiful Lord's Prayer that we used at our New Year's service. It comes from the uh, Anglican Church of New Zealand. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Every time we gather at the table, whether we're able to do that in person or whether we're making spiritual communion in our own homes, there's a sense in which we bring all the broken bits of who we are and the bits that are broken because plans have had to be set aside once again because of the new phase of lockdown that we're in. We bring all the things that didn't get resolved from last year. We 
bring all the things that we know are challenging about the year that lies ahead. But Epiphany is a down to business season and the light is in the midst of these fragments that we bring to the table. And so a prayer to express that for us now. Oh God of our ancestors, God of our people, before whose face the human generations pass away, we thank you that we are kept safe in you forever and that the broken fragments of our history are gathered up in the redeeming act of your dear Son, remembered in this holy sacrament of bread and wine. Help us to walk daily in the communion of saints, declaring our faith in the resurrection of the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body. Now send us on in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. So some words of blessing for you in whatever situation you find yourself today as you watch or listen to this service. May you be safe. May you be set free from fear. May you be as whole and as happy and as healthy as it is possible for you to be. And because Jesus is the light of the world, may the darkness be scattered from the uncertain paths that lay ahead. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love today and all the days. Amen.